So last night it rained pretty hard, and when it rains a lot, usually like the first couple times, all the rivers like around this area will just like drain out like all this bacteria and like all this like gunk and stuff. So we're gonna go check the waves and see how they look. We might not go surfing because when you go surfing, like right after a heavy rain like this, it's really, really easy to get an ear infection and ear infections suck. Definitely got some puddles. Okay, so the wind's already on, so it's really windy out and the ocean looks really choppy and messy and like there's dirt, like it's not the cleanest because of all the rain washing out the rivers, like I said. So we might just do other stuff today. How on earth? Does a lock end up at the beach like that? Just lock to a tree. The ocean looks very messy. I don't think we're gonna go surfing. We might just find some other stuff to do. Okay, well since the waves aren't that good, I figure I might as well show you guys my, how my survival kit, my bug out bag, whatever you like to call it, seven two hour bag, is coming along. Because if you have a survival bag or if you're thinking of making one, it's like a never ending process unlike, with like, like, like a lot of things. Like camera stuff or, or survival pack pack or your hiking backpack. There's always something that you can improve. There's always that piece of equipment that's lighter, that one that's stronger, that's better, but sometimes it's more expensive so you can't always get it right away. But yeah, it's always changing. I'm always like reorganizing it or like getting rid of stuff and adding new things. And since I recently got some goodies sent to me from a fan, thank you again, I added some of the stuff, not everything, but some of the stuff, the stuff that I thought would come in the most handy to me. Okay, so this backpack is the Wii Sports Sparrow 30 liters, and it has Cordura fabric, and it has molly webbing all over it, it has a bunch of compression straps, and it has three compartments, like three main compartments. The entire thing is black, because I like to be stealthy. So let's check out what's inside. So I'm gonna start on the front little pocket that I have on the very front. Little waterproof bag. This sometimes I'll put like chargers or something because usually whenever I go anywhere, if I take this backpack, I'm usually taking my camera gear because it's either an adventure or something. So I kind of like to have waterproof bags for stuff like that. Okay, a little lighter with duct tape wrapped around it and a rubber band on the top so that the doesn't let go of the fuel. I have a flashlight, which has this cool little thing. You can spin, you can spin the, the end of it, and it makes it so the batteries aren't being used at all. And I've actually dropped this in water and completely submerged, and then I found it, and it still worked. So that's pretty cool, and it only takes two AAA batteries. And I do keep a little Swiss Army knife. I have a, it has a little blade, another little blade, some just like a bottle opener, some little tools, um, a wine opener, tweezers. Okay, so that's it for the front pocket. Now let's go to the second pocket. In the second pocket, I keep a larger waterproof bag. So I could put all my camera gear in here. A smaller waterproof bag, I could, I could keep my iPod or like the G7X or anything like that. And there is a pen, which actually also has a laser and it has a little flashlight, a little dental floss card. So this is one of the things that my fan gave me. See, it went right into my survival backpack. It's so thin and awesome. Okay, I keep a bigger multi-tool. This has pliers, knives, serrated blades, uh, screwdrivers, files, little saw, little tools. And just like, this is one of my main tools that I have in my survival backpack. I keep a garbage bag, so I could use this to make a shelter or I could put my entire backpack into it if it starts raining. It rains all the time down here in Costa Rica. Like, you'll, it'll be like all sunny and then clouds will show up and it'll just start pouring. So you gotta be prepared. A little garbage bag in a bag so that it doesn't like spread out. And then there's the zippered little compartment in this, in this compartment where I keep a little baggy thing with a bunch of foil for us tons of uses, as you most likely know, so I'm not gonna bore you to death by naming them all. Some headphones, in case I wanna listen to music or something. Some duct tape. A large Tic Tac container with Costa Rican money because sometimes in an emergency, it doesn't, if there's sometimes if there's an emergency, it doesn't mean that the whole planet is like destroyed. It could just be in your area. So maybe you go to a different town and they do have supplies and stuff. So you gotta have money in case they do have stuff so you can buy it. This cool little multi tool, which I've showed you guys a million times, but it has a thermometer, it has a whistle on the side, has a fire starter, flashlight, 
compass, a little magnifying glass, a little level, and a bunch of cool little things for such a tiny little thing. I keep a little Ziploc bag with just like important phone numbers, maybe like taxis, the emergency number, like a vet, and just like house phone and just stuff like that. And that's everything that's in the second pocket. So these zippers are really, really strong and the fabric seems really thick and it almost seems waterproof. Maybe not like submergible waterproof, but pretty waterproof. Okay, into the larger compartment. Three jars of peanut butter. So this makes this survival backpack could be considered a 72 hour bag because this is enough food for one entire day. That's all you really need is one jar of peanut butter. So three jars of peanut butter. I keep a first aid kit, which let me go right into in depth with you guys for a second. I wrote first aid kit on it so that if someone like my friend or family member needs to get to it and find it easily, they know exactly which one it is. This is stuffed full of stuff. Okay, I'll try to get through this quickly. I got a bunch of band-aids, a bunch of little alcohol prep pads. I got one of the dental floss cards, which my fan thank sent me. Thank you again. Underneath that, I got some more floss, a toothbrush, some eye drops, some painkillers, a little sewing kit thing, some Q-tips, some extra batteries, some like medical tape, and underneath that I just have some bigger bandages. And then on this side, I put the first aid kit that my fan sent me. This could definitely come in handy and it definitely will. And it has a ton of needles which could be used for popping blisters or any sort of thing like that. I got some little tweezers for getting out spikes or thorns some tin foil, which could be used for just multiple purposes, some butterfly band-aids, this is for if you have like a gash, more painkillers, some like these wraps for, for medical, some liquid band-aid, under here I have some more duct tape, some more alcohol prep pads, some money, and that's pretty much everything that I keep inside of my first aid kit. This is also just like, has also survival stuff, so it's not just only only a first aid kit. It could also be used for other things. And that's everything that I keep in my first aid kit. Stainless steel water bottle with, this is a titanium cup. So, so the reason that I put my stainless steel water bottle into a sock, so that it doesn't cling around when it's in here, because like this, it doesn't cling around, but without the sock, which I put it in, and that's just annoys me so badly, like if I'm trying to go somewhere or be stealthy or something. So that's why I keep it in a sock. And inside of this, since I don't keep it full of water always, this is what I keep. I keep a white bandana. Oh great, please don't tell me it's stuck. Okay, it wasn't stuck, but I keep a white bandana. And I keep the Sawyer water filter wrapped in the bandana so that it doesn't cling around inside. So instead of having all this space in my backpack and letting it go to waste, I keep something in there, but something that would be used to purify water. And since you can't attack, you can't, since you cannot attach this to this bottle, cannot be attached. I also have, I have this big three liter platypus thing. So you can attach, you would fill this up with water from like a creek or somewhere, attach this and then you can purify water. So that's what I have to purify water. And then I have this container, which is from Stanley, that's a brand, but it's stainless steel. And this is my, this would be my main way to boil water because it has a nice handle and you can have quite a bit of water. But instead of letting this space go to waste, there's a lid, and I have a bandana inside of it. Guess what's inside of the bandana? Bunch of paracord. So here's a little bundle of paracord. Here's a little homemade spool tool that I made full of paracord. And here's a whole bunch more of paracord. So the reason I like to have a bunch of paracord is because paracord has so many uses. You use it for setting up your shelters, you can, and you can use the inner strands for making snares, you could use it for fishing, for just tons of different stuff. You could even use it to floss your teeth. And I also keep in there a little survival sharpener, knife sharpener, which I just got because my mom came back from the States. And then for my survival knife, I have the Bear Grylls survival knife with paracord wrapped around the handle. It's a pretty good survival knife. I've used it, it's pretty strong, pretty sturdy. Works good. And I also keep this container in there. It's a large peanut butter container stuffed full of so much survival stuff. I don't know how I got it in there. But let me go in depth with you guys and show you everything which I keep in here. 
Now. So here it is, in all its might and glory. Okay, dokie. So I dumped everything out of the big jar so that you could see it all nicely. So I like to have tons of matches and tons of different ways to start fire. Because in my opinion, fire is one of the most important things in survival or an emergency. So I have a bunch of matches. These were actually sent to me from my fan. Thank you again. Here are some Strike Anywhere. These were also sent to me from my fan. Thank you again. Here are some Stormproof matches. Thank you again. Here are a bunch of lighters. Here is a magnesium rod with a striker inside. Here is a survival card which my fan also sent me. Thank you again. I got some batteries for my flashlight. Got to make sure you have enough batteries to last you a decent amount of time. Compass. Comes in handy. Some more paracord. Can't go wrong with too much cordage. A little homemade fishing kit that which I made has fishing line wrapped around it and underneath this duct tape is fishing hooks and some weights. Some Costa Rican money, bunch of tin foil, a bandana which could be used to like dry your sweat or filter water or carry fruit that you find or whatever it is. And then I have a few of these little mini Altoids containers to keep some things organized. So in here I have a bunch of Strike Anywhere matches. Thank you fan again for, th for sending me these. Some two little super glues with, these are the lids, but they don't fit inside, so I can't keep them in there. But you could use this to repair stuff or something, or if you get a cut uh, and a little button compass. In this one, I keep some more, but these are just normal matches. And in this last little container, it is full of fishing hooks, because I want to make sure that I have enough fishing hooks, because that's a really good way to get food down here if you have to survive. And I also have some floss. So that's everything that I keep inside of that jar. Thank you for all the matches again. They're awesome. So that's everything that I keep inside of this container. So like I said, I like to keep everything like in its own containers, because if I had all of this stuff like just like loose all around, it'd be hard to find anything. But I can pull this out and like see what's in here and be like, okay, I need that right there, so I'm gonna open the lid and grab it. So awesome. I have so much stuff in here. I could probably survive off of just this bat off of this off just what's in this jar right here. And I didn't show you guys this I don't keep in my survival backpack, but I keep it right next to it. So if we had to evacuate, I would take this. But it's just a machete, which I bought down in Costa Rica. Machetes, they're like worth gold here in a survival situation because you can use them to open coconuts. You can use them to, they'll help you build shelters. You can use them as self-defense. Tons of uses for just a machete. All the time it'll be changing. So every time I feel like I should do an update video, I'll do an update video. And also on the bottom of this backpack it has some straps. So I could attach a sleeping bag to the bottom. So this is a pretty awesome survival backpack. It's not that heavy and I like how it can be compressed down pretty nicely down to your backpack. It has a strap. Oh yeah, and one last thing that I keep strapped to the front of it is I keep this little survival tool strapped to the front of it, which is just a whistle and a flashlight. The reason I like to have this strapped to the, to the straps of the backpack is because this is something that I'd want to get to really quickly. If I, if I see someone and I want to like, sig like be like, hey, I'm over here, like really quickly, I don't want to have to dig through my backpack looking for a whistle. It's right there and I can just go And if there's like, it's dark out or something, I need a flashlight really quickly, flashlight. It's not the brightest, but it's a little one and it's good to have on hand. That's it for today's video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. That's all the stuff that I keep in there in this moment in time. So keep in mind that this is always gonna be improving, and we actually have a family emergency bag, which where we keep more food and more supplies because it's a bigger suitcase. And this, is, this backpack, the other reason I didn't stuff this to the rim is because I want there to be space for like clothes if I'm going on a sleepover, as well as camera gear because I'm usually making videos of just like where I'm going or what I'm doing or if I'm going on a cool adventure or something. So make sure to check out my last video which is right over there where I took the wax off my surfboard and show you guys how I redid it and I'm out. Booyah! And time to pack it up. Oh no! Ah, I forgot two things. Oh yeah. Bunch of zip ties which have tons of uses and this big old Sea to Summit how many liters? 13 liters bag, which you can roll up and is completely waterproof. So I could also keep camera gear or clothes or anything in this bag. Or if I wanted to carry water back to my camp, I got this. Okay, now we're actually down with my bag.